Welcome to LH Kids at Home. My name is Kelly and I am so excited you guys are tuning in today. Today is a super special day because we are talking all about one of my favorite things to celebrate. Did someone say celebrate? Yes. I love a good party. Kelly, is it your birthday? No, it's not my birthday yet, but it's definitely something to celebrate because today we're talking all about baptism. Baptism? That's great, but are we not having a party? No, we're still having a party, okay, but it's not exactly a birthday party. We're celebrating what Jesus has done in our life. All right, I love that. So can we still celebrate a baptism though? Absolutely. I love celebrating what God has done in our life and baptism shows others that we are following Jesus. It's always something to celebrate when God forgives us of our sins. Wow, yeah, that really is. But I do have one more question for you, and it's What's kind that? of a big deal. Can we still have cake? Um, always yes to cake. Yes. Perfect. All right, are you guys ready at home? Why don't you stand up and let's get ready to worship Jesus together. You are the answer for a true revival Making the new from the old And I don't just want another cheap survival I want your hope in my soul Come shine in me and scatter my shadows Your light is my life Awaken me in the wake of your mercy now Wow, great job worshiping, friends. Today we're discovering that baptism shows others that I am following Jesus. Have you ever seen anyone get baptized before? Baptisms are incredible and definitely something to celebrate. But what exactly do they mean? And why do people get baptized? Is there anything special about the water? And why doesn't anybody wear goggles? Hmm. Today we're going to answer all of these questions and more as we dive into God's Word and discover what the Bible says about baptism. So grab your Bibles and get ready. Will you pray with me as we begin? Dear God, thank you so much for this day. God, thank you for your Word. And God, I pray that today we understand the importance of baptism. God, we love you and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible is full of incredible, true stories of people getting baptized. People would hear about God and His love for them. They'd realize that they needed Jesus. They would repent of their sin, which simply means to turn away from your sin and to turn towards God. Jesus would forgive them, and people would begin this lifelong journey of following Jesus. To celebrate what God was doing in their life, 
people would be baptized. Baptism was a way to tell others what God was doing in their life. In the Bible, we always see that people are baptized after they repent of their sins. Now hold on just for a minute. We're, we're using a lot of big words here, so let's break this down. First, what is sin? Sin simply means to miss the mark. That is an archery term. Do you have a bow and arrow? I don't have a bow and arrow, but what I do have is a Nerf gun. We love Nerf guns. Now, if I was to set up a target and try to hit that target right in the middle every single time, if I did it, that would be perfect. But if I just missed one time, I would be missing the mark. Sin is anything that hurts God. When we lie, when we cheat, when we steal, when we disobey, that's all sin. It's all bad stuff that we say or we do or we think. Sin hurts God. In fact, the Bible teaches us that sin separates us from God. What? That does not sound so great. And before you think, Psh, not me, I never sin, let me stop you right there. The Bible also teaches us that we have all sinned. We have all messed up. And in Romans 3, 23, we see that. And last time I looked up the word all, that meant me too. So what can we do about this sin problem? Well, we need help. And not just from anyone, we need Jesus. You see, God knew that we would mess up. He didn't want us to be separated from him. God loves us so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to rescue us and forgive us of our sin. Jesus came to the earth. He was born fully God and fully man. He lived a perfect life. Y'all, he never sinned. That's incredible, right? Well, the time came for Jesus to die on the cross. He took all the punishment for our sin. He was buried. But do you know what happened three days later? Did he stay in that tomb? No, he rose again and Jesus is alive. And through Jesus, we have the forgiveness of sin. The Bible teaches us that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We see that in Romans 10 verse 9. Wow. So when we repent and believe in Jesus, we're forgiven. There's that word again, right? Repent. So what does it mean? Repent means to turn away from your sin and to turn toward God. Okay, so let's recap. First, people hear about Jesus and how he loves them. Then they realize that they have sinned and need God's help. So they repent and ask Jesus to forgive them. And he does. Then to celebrate new life in Christ, they are baptized to show others they are following Jesus. You know, this reminds me of one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Let's open up to the New Testament book of Acts and read about it. One man who was curious about God. Our story begins with a man named Philip. Philip loved Jesus. He wanted everyone he met to know the good news about God's love for them. And in Acts chapter 8, we learn that Philip traveled to Samaria to tell everyone about Jesus and how much God loved them. And in Acts 8, chapter 8, it says, One day an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. It said, get up and go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the desert road. So he got up and went. There's an Ethiopian man, a eunuch, and a high official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to worship in Jerusalem and was sitting in his chariot on his way home, reading the prophet Isaiah aloud. Okay, so we've got this guy, this Ethiopian man, and he's hanging out in his pickup truck, I mean chariot, and reading his Bible. This sounds kind of like the way I spend my days. But what happened next? You see, in verse 29, the Spirit told Philip, go and join the chariot. When Philip ran up to it, he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? How can I, he said, unless someone guides me? So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The Ethiopian man needed help. He was reading God's word, but he didn't fully understand what he was reading. Has that ever happened to you before? It happens to me too. 
But what can we do when we're reading our Bible and we get stuck and don't understand something? I think I'm going to call a friend. Hey, Pastor Robbie, what are you doing? You have a goat that's loose. I'll come help you in a minute. But first, I have a question. How did God part the Red Sea? Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, that makes sense. Thank you so much. All right, see you, Pastor. I'll be there in a minute to help you with your goat. Here's the thing. We all have questions. And when we do, we can ask our parents. We can ask a teacher at church. We can ask a friend or even a pastor. Thankfully, Philip was there to help the Ethiopian man understand what he was reading. He told him the good news about Jesus and how much God loved him. He shared that God sent his son Jesus to rescue him and to forgive him of his sins. Next, the Bible says, as they were traveling down the road, they came to some water. The Ethiopian man said, look, there's some water. What would keep me from being baptized? So he ordered that the chariot to stop and Both Philip and the Ethiopian man went down to the water and he baptized him. What? That is so excited. The Ethiopian man was curious about God and was reading his Bible, but he didn't fully understand what it said. Then Philip came along and helped the Ethiopian man understand. He shared the good news about God's great love for him and the Ethiopian man believed in Jesus. He asked Jesus to forgive him and to begin this new friendship with God. Then they saw water. He immediately wanted to be baptized to show others that he was following Jesus. You see, baptism shows others that I am following Jesus. Baptism didn't save the Ethiopian man or forgive him of his sins. There was nothing special or magical about the water itself. You see, baptism simply shows others what God has done in our life. Baptism is something we do on the outside to show others what God is doing on the inside. I don't know about you or if you play a sport, but in my house, we play soccer. And when we play soccer, we wear a jersey. Now, when we go out on the field, if nobody wore jerseys, we wouldn't know who was on what team. So my boys put on a jersey so we can tell what team they're on. The jersey doesn't make them part of the team. It just identifies with which team they are on. You see, baptism is kind of like that. Baptism doesn't save you, but baptism is a symbol of God's love for you and that Jesus has done something in your life. It is something that shows you on the outside what God has done on the inside, that he has forgiven us of our sins and that we have promised to follow Jesus. You see, baptism shows others that I am following Jesus. Will you say that with me? Baptism shows others that I am following Jesus. Great job, friends. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for our sins, but not staying there and raising again. And God, thank you that we can have a new life in you. God, we love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Wow, what a great story. Thanks, Andrew. Baptism is always something to celebrate. Baptism shows others that we are following Jesus. And today, we're going to talk with some of our friends who are getting ready for their own baptism. Let's listen in. All right. Hey, friends. My name's Kelly, and I'm super excited to be sitting here with two of my LH Kids friends. This is Riley and Hayden. You guys recently took the LH Kids baptism class, right? Yes. Okay, so you're getting ready for your baptism. Tell me how you feel about it. Are you nervous? Excited? I'm excited. I'm both. I'm both. ready for my baptism. Everly, what's up, girlfriend? Hi, Miss Kelly. Hey, are you going to the beach? What's going on? No, I'm getting ready for my baptism. I can kind of tell she's very excited. I think you're right. She's Yay! excited. Hey, why don't you grab a seat? I'm okay. so excited you're here, but whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hold on a minute. What's with the inner tube and like the goggles and everything? Well, Miss Kelly, Duh, I am going to be dunked in their water. You know, you're right. I've never seen a baptism with an inner tube before, but it could be a first. Do you guys want to get, you know, bathing suits, goggles, all that? No, not really. 
No. Do you need that when you're baptized? No. Not no. Really. Uh, you have a choice. You have a choice. Yeah, you don't have to wear it, but you could if you wanted to. Is it going to be like a long time that you're underneath no. the water? No. So you just, it's like two, it's like two shakes of a lamb's tail. <laughs> it's, it's super like quick. It's super quick, right? Wop, wop. You're just down and then like, you come wop, back wop. up. In the baptism class, we talked about that a lot, right? That up, down, up. Yes. Can anybody tell me what that means? What um, does that mean, Riley? Um, so, uh, you're, so Jesus was up on the cross, then, then he died, and then he rose again, and, and then when you get baptized, you're standing up. You get dunked underwater, then you stand up again. That's exactly right. Um, okay. Let me ask you this. Is there anything special or magical about the actual water? No, no it's, it's just, just normal. plain water. No, it's, it's just normal because, tap water. Because Jesus got baptized in the river. Like, you can't get baptized into any ordinary water except dirty water. You can totally get baptized in the river, at the beach, or in the baptistry here at church, right? Or There's pool. nothing special about I the water. I could get baptized in the creek behind our house. You could, absolutely. So sometimes people are really nervous about getting baptized. If you had a friend that wanted to get baptized, but they were really afraid, what advice would you give them? Um, I would tell them that it's okay, God and Jesus are here, and it's just two shakes of a lamb's tail. It's super quick, right? And you're mm -hmm. right, God is always with us, even if we're feeling nervous or afraid. Okay, one last question. Tell me why you want to get baptized. To, um, show, to show everyone that I accept Jesus into my life. Yeah, to show awesome. everyone that I accepted Jesus and that I'm a follower of Christ. That's so I, awesome. So I can show people that um, it's okay um, to get baptized and it's okay to be scared, but God and Jesus are always here to help you. That's so right. And you guys brought up a really good point, that baptism is always something we do after we ask Jesus to forgive us, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's not like the water or the baptism itself saves us or anything, right? Yeah. No. Right. It's just something we do after to celebrate that God has forgiven us. So are you guys going to celebrate after your baptism? Yeah. And of course, Absolutely. we're going to eat. I don't know I don't where, where yet, but we are we're going to go out to eat. Something really good. My yeah. family. Our, me and my family are going to a party with the water slide and mini pie and bouncy houses. And guess what? what? I even get to pie my parents in the face. What? No pie your parents in the face? Pie and then face. I get That's... to throw cake balls. What? Wow, that sounds like so much fun. Mm -hmm. Well, friends at home, if you want to get baptized or if you have questions or simply want to learn more about taking the next step in your faith, then check out LH Kids on social media for <laughs> updates on the next LH Kids virtual baptism class. We'll see you like we'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Yay! Baptism. Two, three. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Thanks so much for joining us today, and be sure to tune in next week because we are starting a brand new series called Recipe for Life. We'll see you there.